Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're so excited uh, to be here today for the Purdue Alumni Panel. Uh, my name is Ashley Peifenberger. I'm a senior corporate recruiter um, on the campus team here at Beacon Hill Staffing Group. I'm responsible for all of our internal hiring for the Midwest. Um, and again, excited to chat with all of our awesome Purdue alumni. Yes. So I'm Kristen Rodriguez. Um, I'm in the Indianapolis Office for Technology. And I graduated at, um, from Purdue in 2011. So I've been out of school for about nine or 10 years. Essentially started with Beacon Hill after Purdue, right after Purdue. So I was involved at Purdue. My major was behavioral neuroscience, which is part of the human and health science college. Um, and I was involved at Find You, my sorority. I also was involved in PACE board of directors. Um, I also helped with campus tours and I also was a BGR leader. Guys, yeah, so my name's Katie Hackney. I um, am also a Purdue grad, of course. Um, I graduated 2012 um, with my undergrad, 2013 with my master's. Um, and then I also joined uh, Beacon Hill right out of school. I also started in the Indianapolis office. And then after about a year, I relocated over to Columbus, Ohio, um, which is where I live now. And um, during my time at Purdue, um, I was on the softball team. Um, and then my graduate assistant year, I actually worked for the John Purdue Club. And, um, you know, that's actually how I got connected with Beacon Hill. And um, I'm excited to talk to you guys today. Yes. Um, so my name is Catherine Tito. Um, I am in the, uh, well, my title is a staffing consultant. I'm in the Dallas, Texas um, office. I graduated last year, so 2019. Um, I majored in hospitality and tourism management, and I minored in Italian. Um, things I was involved in at school, um, I was a, I was um, really involved with my sorority, Zeta Ta Alpha. I also did BGR, um, and then I did a couple clubs involved with um, HTM. So, um, so I guess first off, what attracted you to staffing and how does it relate to your undergrad experience at Purdue? So we'll have everyone kind of run through, um, their answer. If Kristen, you'd like to kick us off, that'd be great. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I didn't really know about staffing, you know, right away during my career at Purdue. In fact, um, I changed my major a couple times at Purdue because I was trying to figure out like the right fit and like what I wanted to do for a living. And all I knew was like, I wanted to get out of school and make a lot of money and I wanted to be successful. And so my senior year, I just started applying to some different roles. Um, I actually found out about staffing through one of my best friends in my sorority, her brother. Um, he lived in Florida. And I remember visiting him for part of our spring break trip. We got to visit his house and he had the whole setup. He had the cars and the, the house and the pool and had just gotten married. And he had graduated from Purdue too. And I was like, well, you look really successful. Like, what do you do for a living? And he's like, oh, I, I'm a technical recruiter. And I'm like, well, I want to do that, Rob. I want to do that, Rob. I want to do the role. So I started applying to different technical recruiting roles. Um, some of the Cross Beacon Hill. Actually, my boss um, was part of my sorority at Beacon Hill um, or at Purdue, and she worked for Beacon Hill at the time. And she sent out a posting, and it said, you know, hey, for any seniors graduating, if you're interested, I have this recruitment role, and I knew exactly what it was. I was like, oh, that is the role I want. I applied for it. Um, I actually applied for it. Like I said, a lot of different kinds of roles and staffing just felt like it was going to be the place where I could really achieve my goals and really make the kind of money that I was looking to make out of school because that was success to me. You know, I wanted a career where I could control my own destiny for that. And I just fell in love with kind of the unique culture of Beacon Hill. It didn't feel like it was like a you know, huge firm where I'd be one of 10 people coming in and just a number of a freshman class or something. And it felt very much like this was a place I could pursue a career with. Um, so I ended up signing on right after graduation and I've been here ever since. So I kind of got lucky a little bit. <laughs> I, love I also have, I report to the same person that Chris does. Um, so I run the Columbus office and one of the things that when I first got out of school, I had my master's was kind of pushed towards HR, but I wasn't sure. Same thing with Kristen. Like I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. I didn't know what staffing was. Um, I knew that I was super competitive. I liked accomplishing goals. And I also like, I was the type of person that like, 
always was going to work harder than everybody else in the group or on the team or whatever it was. And like that, if that is you, like, that is you were made for staffing, like, because it is, it's one of those jobs where you do like you control your own destiny. Um, so as I was, I actually interviewed with a competitor, um, and for some of the same things, um, that Kristen was mentioning, like, you know, I, I didn't get a great feeling. I felt at home when I talked to my boss at Beacon Hill because there were a lot of things when I went on a half day interview with a competitor, um, I felt like they were saying how much money you could make and all of this and it sounds great. But then I was trying to crunch the numbers like in my head um, during the interview and I was looking at there's 50 people in a room and there's only one person that's maybe making close to that. Um, whereas when I talk to my boss, you know, the, the team sizes are typically a little bit smaller. It's more individualized to you. Um, and that's really kind of why. So I think that that was the biggest thing um, why I got into staffing and then it's kind of taken off ever since. So I was very confused my senior year in terms of what I wanted to do with my life. Um, like Kristen said, I didn't know um, what staffing was before, um, you know, before I had met Ashley, you know, honestly. Um, so I knew that I wanted to do something with sales. I knew that I, you know, wanted to make a decent amount of money and I wanted to kind of, you know, build a, build a career for myself, um, you know, and studying hospitality and tourism. I, I knew that for me, I wanted a, a work-life balance and with hospitality, I wasn't really going to get that option if I chose the, the typical career path, um, you know, but taking my hospitality experience, you know, with working with people, um, you know, just loving, helping others, having that service like mentality, um, that servant heart is what I've always liked to describe it as. I knew that I still wanted to have that in a career, but I wanted it to be kind of the sales aspect of that to where I could kind of, you know, feel like I'm helping others, but also kind of helping myself in a way and like, you know, um, pushing myself towards that. Um, so, you know, when I met Ashley and she told me a little bit more about it, um, you know, we, we kind of, I kind of told her like, you know, I'm kind of looking to get into sales and then started talking a little bit more about recruiting. And I thought, you know, that, that makes sense for me, especially term in terms of like what I studied and just the mentality that I have. Um, and then, um, you know, the different divisions in, in Beacon Hill too, we decided that the associates division was going to make sense for me because that's more of our like clerical administrative positions that are a little bit more, I don't want to say like niche, but a little bit more like people focused um, where you have to have kind of those soft skills over those hard skills. So, um, but yeah, that's how I kind of got into it. So, yeah. Let's love to learn a little bit more about your specific position and kind of help our attendees understand a little bit more about our jobs. Um, so if Catherine, you want to kick us off, because I know you do recruiting and then we'll have Katie talk a little bit about sales. Yeah, definitely. So, um, so on the recruiting side, um, a lot of my day is, you know, kind of sourcing, pipelining, you know, finding new candidates um, that I could potentially place in jobs, um, you know, focusing on roles that we currently have open, trying to fill those positions. Um, it's pretty fast paced, um, especially if, you know, something comes out and, you know, if, if a client needs someone pretty immediately, it's kind of fast paced in that, um, in that aspect. Um, another big part of my day is just um, connecting with candidates that I maybe have already previously placed in jobs or candidates that I'm looking for jobs currently, I might just not have something for them at that moment. Um, so lots of talking over the phone, lots of connecting, um, lots of just constant conversations with people. Um, you know, there's always, you know, we're doing interviews all day, um, face to face interviews, you know, before COVID obviously was in the office, but now it's all over zoom and FaceTime. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my day today. Um, and then Katie, if you want to talk a little bit about your role. So Katie is a division director in Columbus, but she focuses a lot with sales, working on the client side of Katie, if you want to talk a little bit through about your responsibilities. Yeah, so I um, oversee the sales and recruiting team in Columbus. Um, but one of the big things about Beacon Hill is it is definitely like a lead by example, player coach type of um, organization where even though, you know, I am 
the director and I'm responsible for overseeing people, I am still heavily selling. Um, so think of um, account management in our job as more of like your traditional like outside sales. It is more cold calling. It's more you're going to meet with people. Now, obviously now we're doing everything virtually, but you're taking people to lunches. Now it's virtual. You're going to happy hours. You are essentially getting that person to believe in you to where if they need to, and Kristen and I are in the tech division. So we are placing IT people. So if that manager needs a technical resource, he's going to think of Katie and Beacon Hill or me and Beacon Hill or Kristen and Beacon Hill first, um, as opposed to any one of our competitors. So I love it because it is more, it is account management, it's sales, but it's not, it's relationship building like yes you still have to set the first meeting you still have to cold call and do all of those things but then it's more about like we're not selling a product like we're selling our services so it really is if people trust you they'll give you a chance and that's so a recent uh placement we actually um i cold called this guy um couple months ago he we had a good first meeting he had a developer role open uh, um and we had somebody start on his team today and it's a pretty big deal because it's a new account for our office um, and they use quite a few contractors. Um, so that that was kind of a big deal and that just happened today. So Yay! Cool like, you, get to, like, you get to like, yeah, like influence the sale. I, that's what I like most. Yay, Nicole's here. And the, hello, do you want to quickly introduce yourself to all the attendees and they can just kind of go through a little bit about who you are. Now, uh, Nicole uh, is works in out of our Fort Lauderdale tech office. So if you want to kind of give a little highlight about yourself, that would be great. Yeah, sorry about that technical difficulty. <laughs> yeah, I've been very technical savvy, but here we are. So I actually, um, you know, went to Purdue. I just graduated in May 2020. Um, I work out of the Fort Lauderdale, Florida office. And while I was at Purdue, I was really involved. Um, I was the president of Pi Beta Phi for 2019 school year. I got really involved with um, Big Ten Golf. And then I actually had an internship with Beacon Hill in the spring semester before COVID <laughs> happened. You know, can you tell us a little bit more about the training process? So perfect timing, Nicole, you're on board. You can talk a little bit about your experience with training. I know you had some training in the office with Chris and then of course, remote training as well. So I, I know our attendees will be curious to hear how that went for you too. Yeah, yeah. so the awesome, Kristen's great. So shout out to Kristen. <laughs> Probably pretty much the same, but a little different in the sense that I got to like actually see what I was getting involved in before I went full time, right? So um, Kristen really helped me out a lot every day. We did a lot of role plays. So it was really hands on and engaging. So I felt comfortable um, doing everything before, you know, like meeting anyone new or, you know, cold calling people as well. So I feel like that really helped me out in the sense of like being remote now, I'm totally comfortable doing everything. And even to this day, like Kristen still helps me out and trains me and we'll just do role plays back and forth on the phone until I've like mastered everything. Um, if you want to jump in on how you train as a manager. So, uh, Kristen is our senior recruiting manager in Indy. Um, so she does the recruiting side, but also manages. So if Kristen, you want to talk a little bit about, you know, how you train, that'd be great. Yeah, because most people who start with us have no experience. I mean, we have a lot of people who are very successful who came in with no staffing experience whatsoever. And we love hiring recent grads. I love hiring recent grads because that's where I started out of Purdue. And it's extremely hands-on. You don't have to know anything about recruiting or technology or whatever you're staffing for. We teach you everything. I mean, you should see our training binder. It's like thick. <laughs> <laughs> super heavy because we want to cover every single part of our craft in different chapters and we walk through it. I mean, step by step by step, we're putting you on the phones quickly. We're giving you that feedback. We're talking through different role play scenarios. We really view this as a career. So we take it very seriously. So our training is very deep, um, but we really want you to master that. And you know, depending on the person who starts, you know, and how much investment you put into it, you can pick up the craft rather quickly. And as long as you're a hard worker, all the other things will come into play. And let's kind of dive into career growth. Um, so let's see, what does your growth look like and career path look like? So let's start with Kristen on your career path and what, how you got to where you are today. Well, as I mentioned, I started right out of school with no experience from Purdue. 
and I worked my tail off the first couple of years. So I was working all the time. I think my friends thought I was crazy. They were like, oh my gosh, like you are working all the time. You're always a bone, you know, yada, yada. I'm like, well, they told me if I just work hard, I'll be successful and I'll make a lot of money. So I did that for a couple of years um, and then was promoted to senior recruiter. Um, and then from there, I was able to take on some leadership opportunities within my company. So at, in, in, in Indianapolis, we had a need for a more manager role. So I got promoted to that. I think I was in maybe my you know my um, area that that was open but you can take leadership opportunities a lot of different ways whether that be a mentor within our company you can be a lead um you know if you are work hard and you're putting in the time there opportunities are endless here so what's cool about it is you may not even think okay gosh there's got to be this role and then this role and then this role within a corporate company we're entrepreneurial, we're growing, and we have different needs at different times. And so if you're working hard, you're gonna be one of those people who get those opportunities. My path, um, again, started um, right out of Purdue, came in, joined the Indianapolis office. I actually used to ask Kristen a lot of questions because she had been in the job about a year. Um, we were both like working our tails off. Sometimes we'd go on walks after work, like, oh my gosh, we're working so hard. And like, but the, the thing about it is, is like, it's one of those jobs, that, like it is hard, like it's not an easy role, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, so I was in Indy for about a year, a little bit over a year. Um, my boss actually asked me if I wanted to relocate to Columbus and um, essentially kind of sell and start as a sales manager. And I thought about it for about an evening and said, yep, let's do it. So I, um, so that was so obviously still selling this entire time. Started off as an account executive, um, then was promoted to business development manager um, when I moved to Columbus. And then probably about six months later, I was promoted to a division manager, which means I run everything except for the PL of the office. Um, and then about a year after that, I was promoted to a division director. So, um, it's definitely one of those companies that if you work your butt off and you learn the business and you're a sponge, um, you can, you control your own growth. And that's kind of, I'm, like I said, I'm so thankful um, because of course it's one of those jobs that you get out what you put in and yes, it's hard and it's not, um, you know, it's, it's not super, it's not a get rich quick scheme. Like it is, it's difficult. It's mentally challenging. It's all of these things, but um, yeah. And that's, and Kristen and I still report to the same person and our very close personal friends and kind of talk to each other several times a week, even though we're in different States now. So <laughs> what is your favorite part of your job when it comes to the day to day? So Catherine, if you want to kind of highlight, you know, your favorite part, that'd be great. Yeah, definitely. So I would say uh, my favorite part of my day to day is honestly just um, maintaining and building the relationships with my with my candidates. So whether that be um, people that I already have working for me, or people that you know may may have just met that day or met you know a month prior, um, just calling them and like touching base, especially during this time. Um, so many people are are going th through such a hard time, um, and and having those you know, 10 minute conversations with them over the phone means so much to them. And it means so much to me too. Um, and, you know, like I said, especially during this time, like, you know, just the emails that I've gotten or just people saying it to me, you know, over the phone, like, thank you so much for like, just checking in on me, like just, just calling me, um, you know, and I think that that is the one thing about this position that I've, that I've learned to love so much is just building those relationships with people, you know, cause they start off as a cold call as a complete stranger. And then, you know, a week later, a month later, you know, that person's cat's name, or, you know, they're that how many kids they have. Like, it's, it's, it's really cool to, to build those relationships for sure. Definitely. Um, all of the networking that I get to do, um, if anyone knows me, I could talk to a wrong number all day. So it's just building those relationships with people and really getting to know what they're looking for and helping them find a new a position that's going to help their life tremendously, especially during this time, just even getting people in the door to getting interviews and meeting hiring managers. I think that's amazing. And uh, the relationships you build with people, like I will have 
Um, guys send me recipes from their wife uh, recently, just like, uh, you know, letting them know that they're thinking about me or thanking me for helping them get in the door somewhere. So I think that's the my favorite part of the day is building relationships with people that I would have never met otherwise. So next question is, what is your favorite office or Beacon Hill tradition? And we're gonna have everyone answer this. So Kristen, you wanna kick us off with your favorite tradition? That'd be great. So one of my favorites, there's so many good ones, but I have to say the holiday party for me is like the most epic experience ever. We agreed all the above. I think that for me, it was President's Club. So that is essentially our highest honor. Um, if you average a certain um, gross revenue for the year, you qualify for this trip. And But it's not like... Um, I, I don't even know how to explain it. So I qualified after my second year. Um, I remember walking into this resort and this resort is, I mean, it's about a thousand dollars a night to stay there. Everything's all inclusive. Like it's wonderful. And I remember walking in thinking like, I don't know that I'm qualified to be here. And, you know, it's one of those things that like every year it is, I've qualified several times now. Um, I think this would be my last, this year would have been my fifth trip, you know, and it's one of those things that every single year it still takes my breath away and it's pretty cool. And I think it's roughly like 20 or 25% of our company qualifies. I would say our quarterly outings are really awesome. So each office, um, you know, in different cities will do different things, but a couple that we've done before, uh, we've done like bowling. Um, we've done, I know that um, previously they've done a boat trip. Um, a wine tour was one of them also. Is every Thursday, our regional director, Shannon will send out like a positive email of what everyone has done the previous week and what's positive going on in their offices. And it really highlights what everyone's been working on. And then also just helps me to understand what other people are doing and how great everyone's doing and once makes me wanna be a better myself. So I really enjoyed that. Describe your Beacon Hill experience using one word. I would say rewarding. Cheat a little bit. I'm gonna use like a hyphen and say life changing. Just because I think that, again, like I same, I've been here set over seven years going on eight. Um, and it truly has like Beacon Hill has opened doors that I never thought I would, especially like I'm in my early thirties. Like I've never, you know, I, I have things that I never thought I would. And I have I had opportunities that I never thought I would. And um, I would say my word is, is opportunity. And just to kind of elaborate a little bit on that, I think, um, you know, a, a job like this, especially with Beacon Hill, I thought it was amazing that, that I had the opportunity to like, that they took a chance on me essentially, um, you know, not having industry experience already, um, but knowing just who I am as a person, being a super hard worker and just being super determined and taking those qualities and putting it into this job. Um, and Nicole, take us home. What what would you say is your one word? Yeah, so that's super difficult, but I think um, for me it's engaging just because I never thought in a million years that I would have so much help and be so supported to do like to be be my best basically and every day I'm just engaged in something different or meeting someone new and it's been very very great for me and rewarding as Kristen would say as well. <laughs> and thank you so much again to our amazing panel Catherine, Nicole, Katie, Kristen. Really appreciate you all being on today um, and thank you so much for our attendees for joining. I hope this was helpful and a great resource for you all. Um, again we are you know run with the process. Career Fair season is here which I can't believe I have managers that will make offers now for 2021 grad. So if you're really interested and excited, let's definitely connect and we can get um, the process going. But thanks so much, everyone. Have a great week.